What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna kick off a series on creating some useful geometry node setups for use in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember that you probably wanna be running Blender 4.0 or above because we're gonna be using some of the geo tools functions contained inside of Blender 4.0 to save these as assets. But what I wanna do right now is I wanna kick off and the first video in this series, I wanna create a geometry node setup where I can take a group of objects and generate them along a path. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click the plus button and we're gonna create a geometry nodes window right here. That's just going to give us a workspace that we can work in. And so what we want to do is we want to take this object right here and we want to copy it along a curve. And so to do that, let's go ahead and let's set this up. And so the first thing is this one is going to be a modifier. So remember you have the options in here to create a tool which works inside of edit mode or a modifier. In this case, we wanna do the tool because we wanna be able to adjust this later on and we're not really gonna be working with just partial selections. We're actually gonna draw like a real path. And so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna set this up so that this creates an object along a curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add a curve right here. We'll just add a Bezier curve. And I'm just gonna tab into edit mode. I'm going to select these, hit X and delete them out. And I'll go ahead and turn my screencast keys on right here. But all I wanna do is I wanna take this option right here and I just wanna draw a spline. And we can go into a top down view in order to draw this spline. And I'm just gonna draw something very simple like this. Okay, and so now we've got a curve created. What I wanna do is I wanna click on the option for new right here, and I'm just gonna call this object along curve. So we're just gonna go ahead and label this so that when we click on our drop down right here, we can see which uh, modifier that we're picking in the modifiers toolbar. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take this curve and I want to pick a bunch of points along the curve. And so to do that, I'm just gonna do a shift A and I'm going to look for curve to points. So, and usually what I do is I just type this in here. You can also go into the curve function right here and scroll down and you can find curve to points um, either way, but you just wanna plug this in so that this curve is going to get divided into a number of points. And now note that you can set the number of points that are in here using this count function. Now with this count function, we actually want this to be something that we can modify in our modifier setup, right? So what I'm going to do is I can set up an input in my group input. So in this case, I'm gonna drag a new input into the count. Well, notice how now that shows up and within our modifier right here, we can actually adjust the input or the number of objects that are being created along the curve right here. And so you could also set this to be a length. So if you wanna set this up where you set the spacing in here instead, you could do that. So say that you wanted to set this up, and this is probably what I'm gonna do. Say you wanted to set this up where every one of your lights was gonna be 20 feet apart. If we set this to length, then we can type in a value of length. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag the count into the length right here. And remember that you can tap the N key and for this count, you can actually rename this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rename this to length in my interface. Notice how that changes right here. And so one other thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I set this to a type of float rather than integer so that it actually shows up with, uh, with some precision over here. So now if I typed in 20 feet, it's gonna type in 20.00 right here. And we can go ahead and we can set this to be a distance as well. So now I've got this setting up these number of points. Well, the next thing I wanna do is I want to place an object on those points. And so to do that, we're just gonna do a shift A. And in this case, we specifically want to add an instance on points. So we're just gonna click right here in order to set that up. And so what that's going to do is that's going to take 
an instance of an object and it's going to place it on those points. But notice how we have a little bit of a problem right now. And the problem that we have is that we currently don't have an object in here. So it's not actually doing anything. And so what we need to do is we need to add something that's going to tell this what instance to put on the points. And so in this case, I'm just going to drag off of the instance and I'm going to add an object info node right here. Notice this object info node is a tool that you can use to get information about an object. And in this case, if I was to sample this light, notice how now this is placing that light in here at this distance like this. But right now, you have to do this directly inside of your geometry node setup, which is not necessarily what we want, um, because we want to be able to set this in the modifier. So I want to drag a node from our group input into this box right here. Well, now, notice how this has a little box where you can pick what you want to place along this point. And so in this case, I can place my Bonnie model in here. One thing I need to do with that model is apply my rotation and scale. But now if I click on this, notice how I can set any object to be placed along this curve right here like this. And so now we've got a tool that's actually allowing us to set the distance between our different objects in here. Now, one thing though, is you might want to set this tool up where you have a little bit of control over this. And so for example, notice how with my instance on points, I have options in here to set things like the rotation of the object like this. So in this case, right, I can set the Z rotation and notice how those are going to rotate. And so what I'm going to do is I want to set this up where I can set that Z location using or that Z rotation using my inputs right here. And so what you could do is you could drag a box or you could drag a node directly into the rotation right here. Um, I don't necessarily recommend this because what you're going to do, and I mean, if you're building a tool for yourself, you definitely could do this. Um, but um, really all we want is just that X input and not the other inputs. And so what we can do is we're going to do a shift A and we're going to look for a combine X, Y, Z node right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that rotation right here, I'm going to drag this vector into the rotation, and then I'm going to plug this into the Z value like this. Now I have a Z value that I can place in here and use to rotate this object. And so now I've got a Z value in here and we might rename this. So we could just call this object rotation Z axis and see how that's going to show up in here. But you can use this in order to set the rotation of these objects just like this. Okay, so real quick, let's talk about how we can get this to show up in our modifiers section over here. And so what I want to do is I've got this curve and I've got and I want to place this bollard along the curve. Um, and this will actually work right now. So if I click on add a modifier and I look under unassigned, this is basically going to show all of the non asset geometry nodes set up that are in Blender right now or that are currently residing in this file. So if I click in here, go to unassign and click on object along curve, notice how it's going to add that modifier to this curve. Now, nothing is showing up because I haven't selected the bollard or added a length. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set a length in here like this. That's fine. But I want this modifier to show up in um, an actual asset capacity. So what I want to do is within this modifier that we've now created, I want to right click on it. I want to click on the option for mark as asset and I want to save my file. So when I save my file and I jump into my asset browser and I look in my current file, notice how this is actually going to show up as an asset like this. So now this is going to show up as an asset right here. And so if I save this into a folder, and I actually like organize it. So if I save this into a folder that I then reference, cause I already have like a geometry nodes modifier tool set right here that I've saved, um, then this is gonna show up as an asset in any Blender file 
that I use. So I would just save this in an assets folder and then within my preferences, I would make sure that I'm referencing that asset library um, inside of my asset libraries function right here. So you can see how in my Blender tools, for example, I have a number of different modifiers that are in here. So you can use this to save these. Well then, whenever you open up a new file, this is going to show up. So um, if you mark something as an asset and then reference it in the asset browser, then it'll show up in your drop down over here on the right hand side like this. And so one other thing we can do is if I go into my current file and I want to save a um, thumbnail of this object, what I can do is I can select it and tap the N letter key on my keyboard. Notice how there's a little preview window that's in here. Well, what I can do is I can click on the little drop down right here for render active object. And what that'll do is that'll take this object and it'll do a little quick render of it and it'll save that as the thumbnail for this geometry nodes tool. So you can use that in order to save or update or add your own custom thumbnail previews in this little window right here. And then they'll show up like this. So that's where I'm in this video. I'm planning on doing a whole series on different useful tools in here, like scattering things on faces, maybe some random extrusion of faces, other things like that. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.